The Elder Scrolls, a name I'm sure we all know, a name we long for. But have you ever wondered what exactly is an Elder Scroll? A sincere question that deserves a courteous response. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Camel, but more importantly, welcome back to the Elder Scrolls lore series, which in this video's case is a double entendre. Anyway, it's a series in which we have a more in-depth look at the intricacies of the Elder Scrolls universe to help us better understand the games we so love. Today we will be focusing our gaze upon the Elder Scrolls themselves, with great caution though as we could easily send ourselves blind or insane. If Elder Scrolls lore does tickle your fancy, links to my other Elder Scrolls lore videos can be found down in the description along with links to my social media, be sure to give them a click after this video. But for now, the Elder Scrolls. Items of such import, so much so that the very game series itself is named after them. But at no point is it really ever made clear as to what the Elder Scrolls are, or to what an Elder Scroll actually is. Where did they come from? How do they actually affect the ebb and flow of fate? Why do we see them so little in game, when again, the entire game series is named after them? In fact, the first time an Elder Scroll actually ever made an appearance in game was during The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, 12 years after the birth of the game series. Such an absence for such a vital apex of the plot of The Elder Scrolls games. I mean, how many are there? Where are they? What's their purpose? All excellent questions that I ask myself regularly, and all questions that are easier to understand than their answers. However, fear not, it's by design that the Elder Scrolls are impossible to understand. We'll delve into why towards the end of the video, because it's a narrative device used by the developers rather than a piece of in-game lore. So if you are confused at any point throughout this video, don't worry, I'm there with you. We're meant to not understand the Elder Scrolls, it's by design. So let's get started on the rather fruitless journey. How do we gently ease into the mammoth topic? Well, how do we simply summarize what the Elder Scrolls are? As Urog Gro Shub explains, and I quote, the simplest way to put it is knowledge. But there's nothing simple about an Elder Scroll. It's a reflection of all possible futures and all possible pasts. Each reader sees different reflections through different lenses and may come away with a different reading altogether. But at the same time, all of it is true. Even the falsehoods, especially the falsehoods. Hmm. So you see, even the simple explanation of what an Elder Scroll is, is not simple at all. And trust me, that was the simple explanation, as we can go deeper, as from a philosophical viewpoint, the origin and purpose of the Elder Scrolls is obscure and indescribably abstract. Septimus Cygnus, a man who spent his life studying the Elder Scrolls and sent himself insane reading one, attempted to explain the Elder Scrolls, and I quote, Imagine living beneath the waves with a strong-sighted blessing of the most excellent fabric. Holding the fabric over your gills, you would begin to breathe drink its warp and weft. Though the plant matter fibres imbue your soul, the wretched plankton would pollute the cloth until it stank to heavens of prophecy. This is one manner in which the Elder Scrolls first came to pass. But are we the sea, or the breather, or the fabric, or are we the breath itself? Can we flow through the scrolls as knowledge flows through, being the water? Or are we the stuck morass of sea filth that gathers on the edge? So you see, if Septimus Cygnus hit the nail on the head in explaining what an Elder Scroll is, it really doesn't help as much in understanding them. Except that it helps us understand that they are ununderstandable. And because of this purposeful, ununderstandable trait that has been forged into the very game design schematics of the Elder Scrolls, there isn't too much information on them either. Well, there is, but it's all pretty weird. But uh, we'll do our best here. The Elder Scrolls are also rarely referred to as the Adric Prophecies, although this name lacks accuracy as there is no evidence that the Adric created them. The Elder Scrolls simultaneously archive both the past and future events. But not only that, they archive all possible futures and all possible pasts. 
They are scrolls of unknown origin, thought to be fragments of creation or of divinity. They exist in an unknowable number. Now the reason the amount of Elder Scrolls is unknowable is not because of their vast quantity, but because the number itself is unknowable, as the Elder Scrolls do not exist in countable form. Confusing I know, but here's an example. During the end of the Third Era, a rumour circulated that an Elder Scroll had been stolen from the Imperial Library. Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion Thieves Guild Quest. After this rumour circulated a little, an Imperial Librarian attempted to take a complete inventory of the scrolls. But these efforts were fruitless, as the scrolls' numbers and placement fluctuated for no discernible reason. There were 273 Elder Scrolls counted and archived within the Imperial Library beforehand. But with each recount, there was a different number, growing and shrinking by dozens, even hundreds. Scrolls vanished and materialized in the umbral darkness of turned backs. Their number, power, placement, purpose, creator are all unknown, but more importantly, unknowable. Observations can be made, but not explained. The Elder Scrolls simultaneously do not exist, yet always have existed. They tell of everything that has been, will be, has never not been, and will one day possibly not be. Yet the scrolls themselves never were. You what? Again, remember there is a development reason for this ultra-confusing metaphysical or even metaphilosophical design of the Elder Scrolls. We'll get into it in a minute and it will make you feel a lot better about how confusing all of this is. Just remember it's been done on purpose. So the Elder Scrolls have a strong connection to time. It could even be described as a relationship. They are fragments of creation from outside of time itself which I would assume means that they are immune to Kalpa cycles and will survive the end time, being carried into the next cycle, to confuse the poor souls in the new Kalpa to come. If you don't know what a Kalpa cycle is, you can watch my video on the left hand at Elves where I explain what a Kalpa is. Now interestingly, until the events each Elder Scroll describes comes to pass, they only contain information about possible events in the future, with each viewing and each viewer containing and perceiving different possible versions of events to come, or even different versions of the same event to come. Once a prophecy contained within an Elder Scroll takes place, the text of the parchment becomes fixed. After that time, all readers ingest and view the same divine message. This renders that particular Elder Scroll as now a historical document declaring the unequivocal truth of past events. Scholars cannot argue the bias of the writer of an Elder Scroll as there is no writer, only the scrolls themselves. The contents of a scroll, once solidified, cannot be altered by any known method or unknown method. The scrolls have a relationship with time, and offer a viewing through a fixed point in time, imbuing a vision to the flow of time itself. However, they appear to be dependent on the flow of time in order to function. For example, events which alter the linearity of time, known as dragon breaks, cannot be recorded or predicted by the Elder Scrolls. Again, an example of this would be the Warp in the West, a dragon break that took place during the events of the Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. The Elder Scrolls could not and did not foresee this event. So there are some forces that even the Elder Scrolls themselves cannot predict. Parthenax explains that dragons are especially vulnerable to the effects of the Elder Scrolls, being born of Akatosh, the god of time. This could explain how Alduin was cast into the future and how a time wound was formed at the point of his exile. And while the Elder Scrolls are commonly used or sought after for their use in divining prophecies, this is but a small part of their power. Although what this other great power is, is never made clear, again on purpose. They often tell of events that require a hero to resolve them, although the scrolls themselves do not select such individuals. It is said that the Elder Scrolls exceed both the Aedra and the Daedra, implying that neither created them. Again, Parthenax steps in and describes the Elder Scrolls as being artifacts that exist outside of time and fragments of creation. 
There are even some who consider seeking and studying the Elder Scrolls to be a blasphemy. A notable example is some of the Greybeards. But what about those who do study them and want to learn their knowledge? How does one read an Elder Scroll? Well, this is a very dangerous and sometimes inconsistent process with varying results. As Septimus Cygnus said, to glimpse the world inside an Elder Scroll can damage the eyes or even the mind. Let's start at the start, shall we? Long ago, the Dwemer devised a means to extract knowledge from the Elder Scrolls without requiring someone to sacrifice their sight or sanity. With their unmatched technological society, the Dwemer build complex mechanical interfaces that read the Elder Scrolls and draw out information, inscribing it onto a metal lexicon which can then be read by those with the requisite knowledge. It is unknown how the quality or quantity of the information gained this way compares to that of someone who reads directly from an Elder Scroll. As visions from the same Elder Scroll or any Elder Scroll vary depending on who is reading it. So when the information is stored onto a lexicon and there is no direct connection between the reader and the Elder Scroll, who knows what the reading is? Perhaps it's even exactly what will happen, rather than being a foresight into the future, a vision that is then influenced by the reader's mind. Perhaps that's how the Dwemer advanced so much. They had precise, untainted information and visions of the future. But what about those who are not Dwemer? Well, without technological aid, the Elder Scrolls cannot be read without extreme side effects, among which are blindness and insanity. Although there are many variables and lessons that can affect how one reacts to reading an Elder Scroll. As we learn from Justinius Polonius's book titled Effects of the Elder Scrolls, from which I shall read. I have grouped the effects into four, finding that the avenue of experience depends largely upon the mind of the reader. If this is unclear, I hope that a proper dichotomy will lay it plain. The first group, the Naifs. For one who has received no training in the history or nature of the Elder Scrolls, the scroll itself is effectively inert. No prophecy can be scried nor knowledge obtained. While the scroll will not impart learning to the uninformed, nor will it afflict them in any adverse fashion. Visually, the scroll will appear to be awash in odd lettering and symbols. This is why in Oblivion, we, the player, can pick up a scroll and look at it without gaining any knowledge nor suffering its side effects. The second group, the unguarded intellects. It is the second group that realizes the greatest danger from attempting to read the scrolls. These are subjects who have an understanding of the nature of the Elder Scrolls and possess sufficient knowledge to actually read what is inscribed there. They have not, however, developed adequate discipline to stave off the mind-shattering effects of having a glimpse of infinity. These unfortunate souls are struck immediately, irrevocably, completely blind. Such is the price of overreaching one's faculties. It bears mentioning, though, that with the blindness also comes a fragment of that hidden knowledge. Whether the future, the past, or the deep natures of being is dependent on the individual and their place in the greater spheres. But the knowledge does come. The third group, the meditated understanding. Alone in Tamriel, it would appear that only the cult of the Ancestor Moth has discovered the discipline to properly guard one's mind when reading the scrolls. Their novitiates must undergo the most rigorous mental cultivation, and they often spend a decade or more at the monastery before being allowed to read their first Elder Scroll. The monks say that this is for the initiate's own protection. Fairly stated, as the cult of the Ancestor Moth must have witnessed many unguarded intellects among their more eager ranks. With appropriate fortitude, these readers also receive blindness, though at a far lesser magnitude than the unguarded. Their vision fogs slightly, but they retain shape, colour and enough acuity to continue to read mundane texts. The knowledge they gain from the scrolls is also tempered somewhat. It requires stages of meditation and reflection to fully appreciate and express what one saw. Finally, the fourth group, the illuminated understanding. 
Between the previous group and this one exists a continuum that has, at present, only been traversed by the monks of the Ancestor Moth. With continued readings, the monks become gradually more and more blind, but receive greater and more detailed knowledge. As they spend their waking hours pondering the revelations, they also receive a further degree of mental fortitude. There is, for every monk, a day of penultimate reading, when the only knowledge the Elder Scroll imparts is that the monk's next reading shall be his or her last. For each monk, the penultimate reading comes at a different and unknowable time. Preliminary work has been done to predict the occurrence by charting the severity of an individual monk's blindness. But all who reach these later stages report that the increasing blindness seems to taper with increased readings. Some pose the notion that some other unseen sense is, in fact, continuing to diminish at this upper range, but I shall leave such postulations to philosophers, i.e. the YouTube comment section. To prepare for this ultimate reading, a monk typically withdraws to seclusion in order to reflect upon a lifetime of revelations and appoint his mind for reception of his last. Upon this final reading, the monk is forever blinded, as sure as those unguarded ones who raced to knowledge. The illuminated one, though, has retained their understanding over a lifetime and typically possesses a more integral notion of what has been revealed to him. The moth priests remain aloof about these matters, taking the gradual debilitation that comes with reading as a point of pride. There is also a little known ritual, known as the Ritual of the Ancestor Moth. It is traditionally a rite performed by moth priests in order to read an Elder Scroll. Usually, moth priests take months to prepare themselves for reading an Elder Scroll, as only the most resilient of the moth priests can read an Elder Scroll with this ritual, and it takes years to interpret the harmony. As such, only a few get the chance to perform this ritual. These rituals take place within Ancestor Glades. The Ancestor Moths within an Ancestor Glade emanate a soft harmonious trilling that when amplified tap into a form of primal augur. This allows the moths themselves to become a conduit for deciphering the scroll. By having the moths close to the moth priest, they can utilize the conduit and share the moths augury. The ritual itself involves carefully removing the bark of a canticle tree with a traditional tool called a draw knife, which in turn attracts the ancestor moths. Once enough moths are in the vicinity, they grant the reader with the second sight needed to decipher the Elder Scroll. Once again, as observed within the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, the last Dragonborn was also able to perform the ritual, despite not being a moth priest. Now physically and completely disregarding the knowledge held within, an Elder Scroll is a rather large golden tube, which when opened, reveals strange markings, charts, graphics and symbols. As Is the Warden observed and pontificated, these esoteric symbols seem to be associated with the constellations at one moment, with the planets at other moments, the Daedric Princes in even more moments, and, which is the strangest in my opinion, all of the above at once. Now this is pretty interesting. A compressed Elder Scroll with the ruins of a Dwemer star map superimposed over the top of it reveal a resemblance. The Dwemer runes have been rotated so that the Dwemer symbol for the Apprentice is equal with the most Apprentice looking constellation found on the Elder Scroll. Although this is a poor fit, one could associate the Dwemer symbols with those nearest to them on the Elder Scroll. Also, when lined up with a Yukudan star map, we'll notice a similar result. Some line up well, some don't, some are missing, and some have extra. It's not enough to confirm anything, but it might be on the right track. One will also notice strange runes written on the Elder Scrolls and their covers. This is a language known as the Elder Script. So far, there are 70 observable characters, although translations are impossible. And even if it were possible, this action may be moot, as Moth Sister Terran Arminus makes an interesting observation, and I quote, the more a priest of the Ancestor Moth communes with the scrolls, the more legible they become. Even as our vision fails and the letters grow more obscure, in fact, the symbols and characters of a scroll's text 
gradually take on the characters of whichever language is most familiar to the reader. This makes the decay of our eyesight all the more mournful, as the loss of the ability to read the scrolls feels like the death of a close friend. So from that, we learn that those attuned with the scrolls will actually begin to see the Elder Script as their own native language. In a sense, the characters on the Elder Scroll translate themselves to fit the reader. Over time, of course. Now these very same Elder Script characters seem to belong to the same language as those carved into the Eye of Magnus, which, just like the scrolls, is an ancient artifact of unknown origin. So it would appear the scrolls have some siblings in their unknown creation, origin, and power. These same runes can be found on the amulets of the Elder Council, which seem to have been made of a metal similar to that of the Elder Scrolls' covers, and crimped with a similar purple gem, although these amulets were likely fashioned to mimic the scrolls by man, rather than by something beyond the everyday. And that is about all we know about the Elder Scrolls, and what they are. So now, as promised, I'll explain why the Elder Scrolls are, and always will be, impossible to understand. Bethesda Game Studios has designed them intentionally as MacGuffins or MacGuffin devices, a crucial plot point that gets little to no explanation of unknown origin, unknowably powerful, unknown motives, unknown abilities, unknowable number. The Elder Scrolls exist within the games to serve as an explanation for whatever the plot demands. It's as simple as that. They've been designed to be ununderstandable so that they are unquestionable. When something happens in the games and our reaction is how the hell is that possible? The answer is the Elder Scrolls. Well, we can't argue with that because we don't really know anything about them, except that they're unknown and unknowable in every way, shape and form. So again, if you felt confused at any point, good, the Elder Scrolls are doing their job. And I'd imagine that they will forever remain as unexplained weird axis of plot that we will never be able to wrap our heads around, which is exactly how they've been designed. If we can't understand them, then we can't question them. If Bethesda Game Studios needs to explain anything unexplainable, they just go, ah, oh, it was the Elder Scroll that did it, and no one can argue with it. And finally, a piece to the puzzle, which is actually some fourth wall breaking poetry in a sense. So because the Elder Scrolls prophesize all possible futures, in a metaphorical sense, the actual game that you buy in real life is an Elder Scroll. The very games we play are the Elder Scrolls themselves, because regardless of each player's choices, the Elder Scrolls knew it would happen. Whether or not this was intended is unknown, but a smirk-inducing observation nonetheless. It also might make you take more care of your Skyrim disc, knowing its true value now. It's an Elder Scroll. So I do hope that you have enjoyed the confusing delve into the Elder Scrolls themselves. Equally so, I do hope that you have learned something new about the beautifully mad universe that these wonderful games take place in, the Elder Scrolls. But most importantly of all, what do you think about the Elder Scrolls? Do you think we'll ever have a clear explanation of what the hell they are? Who created them? And for what purpose? What powers do they have yet to reveal? Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the Elder Scrolls and what you would like me to cover in this Elder Scrolls lore series. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a kindness and leave a like. Share it with all of your friends. Leave a comment with your Elder Scrolls lore video ideas and your thoughts on these MacGuffin Scrolls. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos similar to this one, please subscribe. It helps me know that people enjoy these kind of videos and will result in more of them. My other Elder Scrolls lore video links can be found down in the description, and down there are also links to my social media. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Oh, and if you would like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can become a patron on Patreon. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos that I create for you to enjoy, so your support is genuinely most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. So feel free to check out the playlist on screen, thank you for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon. But of course, I already knew that, because the Elder Scrolls predicted it.